So Megan McCain pressed Julian Castro on The View uh, about his take on the border. And I found this exchange pretty funny for a few reasons. Let's watch. Castro, this is Megan McCain. Um, I hear what you're saying, but if you decriminalize, aren't you calling for open borders? And how can you enforce any rules if there are no repercussions for doing something illegal? Well, there would be repercussions. Somebody is still in the court system. They're still uh, subject to be deported if that's the, the determination of the court. So what, it's just the difference between somebody charged with a misdemeanor crime and somebody charged with a civil violation. At the end of the day, they're still in that uh, civil court process and they may well be deported. So this is not open borders. That's a right wing talking point. Not only that, as y'all know, we With have 654 respect, miles sir, of fencing on the border. I don't think it's a right wing talking have, point when you're saying that someone who's doing something illegal, that there, should be, there shouldn't be ramifications, which at a certain point, if you oh, become no. a general election uh, candidate I, I, against Trump, you're going to have to win over people like me who are skeptical of this. Well, and, and how, how, how can we possibly say that we have open borders when we have 654 miles of fencing, we have thousands of personnel at the border, we have planes, we have boats, we have helicopters, we have guns, we have security cameras, we have states like my home state of Texas that put an extra $800 million into border security. We can maintain a secure border and people are still subject to the law, but what I don't believe we should do is criminalize desperation. We should criminalize crime. And the point that I made last night was, if we're concerned about human trafficking or drug trafficking, we already have laws that criminalize that and hold people accountable for that. That's, that's separate and apart from section 1325 of that act. Okay, so there's a lot to say about this. First of all, let's break down this idea on the border. So there are civil offenses, misdemeanors, and felonies. Felonies are the most serious crime, and you know usually they involve some sort of bodily harm on others. Um, misdemeanors are less serious, and they involve either a fine or usually less than a year in jail. And then uh, civil offenses and civil cases usually only result in fines or orders not to do something from the court. And those things are called injunctions. Um, now, you can't go to jail for a civil violation, although a civil violation can lead to criminal penalties. So in other words, if you, um, if you did a civil violation and you're cited on it and you're supposed to go to court a certain day and then you don't go to court that day, well, then it becomes criminal and you're guilty of failure to appear in court and you can be locked up. So, basically, we're talking about three separate levels of crimes, civil offenses, misdemeanors, and felonies. Right now, crossing a, uh, the border into the U.S. illegally is a misdemeanor, and he's saying, let's make it um, a civil offense. So, it's still illegal, but it, it doesn't carry as serious a penalty. Now, the other main reason why they're trying to do that is actually a very simple one, and, and I think people understand why they're doing this when this fact is explained, which is it stops the breakup of the families if you change it from a misdemeanor to a, a civil offense. So it, everybody's all concerned about, you know, families being broken up at the border and it's now a big issue and kids are being held in cages and shit and the optics of that are terrible on top of it just being pretty much immoral. So why not fix that by still having border crossings illegal, but instead of it being a misdemeanor, change it to a civil offense, and then you can actually keep the families together, even though we're acknowledging that crossing a border illegally is still illegal. So that's the theory behind it. You can agree or disagree with it, but to act like what Meghan McCain said is true, that's just not true. The idea of like, oh, I guess you want open borders now. That's not true. That's not even close to true. Meghan McCain didn't even try to understand this issue. Meghan McCain didn't even try to, to get the accurate position of her political opponents. She just wants, she's just the lazy, like, it's open borders, and open borders is bad. The Democrats have repeatedly tried to make a border deal with the Trump administration. Every deal they made includes increased militarization of the border. So if they're for open borders but they still want border crossings to be illegal, 
and they still want to increase border security, I got news for you, Meghan McCain, they're not for open borders. Nobody is running on open borders. Now, you could still disagree with their position, but you have to understand it before you disagree with it. And she doesn't do that. <laughs> so it's just classic Meghan McCain, like, spoiled rich kid, fucking shouldn't even be in that position, but she's in this position, and she's just smug and fucking wrong about everything. But anyway, I digress from that. The funniest part is, she says, well, if you become a general election candidate, you have to get voters like me. What? No, he doesn't. <laughs> no, he doesn't at all. You are, first of all, you're a Republican. You're a Republican. <laughs> okay? So, to try to craft the Democratic Party to just agree with Republicans, well, then why the fuck is there a Democratic Party? No. It's, a, it's the opposition party. Okay? But second of all, not only are you a Republican, you're like massively rich. <laughs> so the idea that like Democrats, you know who you should craft your policies to be in favor of? Rich Republicans. Not at all. The voters that Democrats need to get, very simply, they have to hold their own base, okay? Expand their own base, get independence, and get the two times former Obama voter who voted for Trump, who's in the Rust Belt, who's living in a dilapidated factory town. That's who they need. They do not need you. And if they were to try to get you, they would lose, like, half of the people that they already have. So, no. I mean, what a ridiculous... Jesus Christ, what a fucking narcissistic buffoon. I've seen so many articles over the past week, like, you know, David Brooks, who I think is a registered Republican, and Brett Stevens, who is a Republican, writing articles in the New York Times like, Now, now, Democrats, you don't want to lose voters like me? Yeah, we do. You're massively wealthy, and you're Republicans. Why the fuck? Like, no. No. We want independence, we want to hold our base and expand our base, and we want the two times Obama voter who flipped for Trump in the Rust Belt. That's who we want. You don't fit any of those categories, so you can fuck right off. There's a party for you, it's called the Republican Party. You want the Democrats to become the Republicans, or at least stay like the Republicans, because the Democrats are too far right as it is. That's what you want. How about, no, there's a, your own party for you. Try to make the Republican Party more in line with your politics. So tell Republicans, hey, don't hate immigrants as much and don't hate fucking gay people as much and keep everything exactly the same and then I'll vote for you. Why don't you go prod them? It only works in that direction. It only works like rich assholes trying to prod Democrats to fall in line to represent them more and not represent the left. Fuck off, man. F we tried that for decades. Fuck off. And then the final thing I'll say is this. Um, Julian Castro, we, we ruthlessly made fun of him when he launched his campaign. Because he did this goofy ass video where he's all like fake aspirational and shit. And um, he does his like really weird smile at the end of the video that's so forced. It's like, it's just so bad. Like everything about his launch video was terrible. It was really narcissistic and about himself and about his life and just hokey and fucking corny and platitudes and cliches and fake smiles and everything was terrible. It was just so wrong in so many ways. In the debate, and in this interview here, Julian Castro now looks miserable. Like, he looks like he is depressed. He looks like he doesn't want to be anywhere where he is. He's got this look on his face like, fuck everything. Now, having said that, he's a much better candidate when he's miserable. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. In the debate, he looked depressed. He looked miserable. He wasn't smiling. He had this look like, fuck this. But he did okay in the debates. In this interview here, he doesn't look happy, he looks miserable, he looks like he's fucking dead inside, but he looks like he's a better candidate when he does that. There is a small chance he actually saw our launch video of his, and us mocking it ruthlessly, and he was like, okay, I have to do anything but what I did in that launch video. <laughs> so instead of being like fake happy and fake aspirational, now he's just like a curmudgeon, but the curmudgeonness sells a lot better. Like, he's so much more palatable when he's like miserable. <laughs> I'm not kidding, man. I really, this is something I really strongly noticed during the debate and in this interview. He seems like he's not happy, but he's a much better candidate when he's not happy. Weird how that works, isn't it?